Uh, last night, Carola, uh, I'm pleased uh, to have the opportunity to speak in response to the motion here this evening. Um, can I say the second paragraph um, of the motion lays uh, an implicit charge of dishonesty at the door of the government? Based, I think, on any analysis, uh, even a cursory one, this charge doesn't amount to an awful lot more than the sort of unfortunate empty rhetoric and some of the bogus claims that we have come to expect from some members of the, the benches opposite, with some, with some notable exceptions. Um, from day one of this national government, we've all said about the task of dragging the country uh, out of the mire, as the Minister correctly pointed out. Uh, we've been upfront and we've been honest with the people in terms of the scale of the challenge ahead. We've rolled our sleeves up and got stuck into the business of getting Ireland back to work. The Irish people, of course, as we all know only too well, have suffered enormously from the recklessness of the banks egged on by successive Fianna Fáil administrations. And it's the job of all of us here in this House to get the country back on its feet again. Uh, the Jobs Initiative, as Deputy Mitchell pointed out, uh, the targeted cutting of VAT rates, the drop in PRSI for employers, have all led to the shoots of recovery in the tourism market, for example. Lest we forget, we had a jump in visits of uh, over 9% from uh, May to July of this year. That's an important point to acknowledge. Uh, GDP expanded by 1.6% in the second quarter of the year. Uh, an even stronger increase was recorded on an annual basis. Taken together with the first quarter figures, uh, last week's data clearly shows that a recovery uh, is in fact underway. Uh, we've managed over a period of weeks to extract a massive saving on the bad bailout deal surrendered uh, by the government last year. Yet this annual saving uh, of several hundred million euros annually to the people we all represent uh, doesn't attract a mere mention from the opposition. Every day we're battling to restore, restore Ireland's reputation internationally, and arguably it is working and working very well. Uh, and I'll give you some examples. Just last week, uh, Reuters said, and I quote, Irish GDP offers a rare Eurozone bright spot. Last Friday, David Cottle of the Wall Street Journal reported that, and I quote, Ireland is achieving quiet success. The Celtic Tiger pours, said Eamon Quinn in, in the Wall Street Journal just uh, the day before that. Uh, these headlines. Um, were frankly unimaginable uh, just a short six months ago. Less than a year ago, if we need to be reminded, our sovereignty was pawned off. I've said it before and I'll say it again, we are in what amounts to a wartime situation. And last can Corla, when it's more of the Churchillian spirit we need, what we get from the members opposite is more akin to the constant cries of we're doomed from Private Fraser and Dad's army. I accept the opposition as a duty to perform. All I ask is that they do it constructively and that they do it honestly. Even, even, even a cursory perusal of the motion before us tonight leads me to the sad conclusion that a large number of the members on the benches opposite, with some exceptions, inhabit what I would char charitably call a solution-free zone. I do not doubt for one minute that Deputy Boyd Barrett uh, and colleagues uh, in this House are all concerned with the crisis of, jobless, of joblessness. But what the 460,000 plus people who are out of work at the moment demand is a sustainable recovery, a sustainable jobs and realistic solutions to the problems that they face. And I think many members will join with me in saying that some of the empty rhetoric that we've heard in this House, not just today but before that, and some of the empty rhetoric that we're likely to hear over the next uh, few weeks and months won't pay the bills and won't feed the families of the people we all represent.